Hi guys and welcome back to another lyrical breakdown with me, your lady friend, ding ding ding, Bonnie. Um, I'm happy to be here. Happy whatever day it is that you're watching this. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Tell me what you're up to, where you're at, what you're what you're doing, what's happening. Um, I'd love to hear all about you guys. Even if like the little, you know, if you're just like, oh, just going groceries, you know, it's like that's cool too. I want to hear about that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> welcome here. Um, I'm very weird and um, I do rap breakdowns. Um, I don't have any sort of degree in this. Um, I do this just for fun. Um, and I hope uh, to learn something from it. And I hope you guys learn something from it. And I hope I can introduce you to like some, maybe some new music. I'm absolutely learning all of this, you know, there's a lot of music that is out there that I've never heard of. Um, and I'm so excited to be discovering it all. And I'm learning and I feel like my knowledge, my knowledge game is like, it's getting up there. Like I'm, I know what I'm talking about now a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to also just mention briefly um, about our Patreons. Um, we have, you know, you can follow the link um, in the description down below. Um, if you do want to support us in any way, we're working towards that. We are kind of making all kinds of movements and growth um, all over the place. Um, slowly but surely, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and we all have jobs. So <laughs> we're just trying to like find the time to get everything done. That's about it. That's enough about that. Um, I just want to go into the lyrical breakdown. Um, and this is something that I was kind of, you know, I feel like most weeks I kind of try to go back and forth and I like don't look at the list. I'm like, I'm going to pick something like on my own. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to like search and see what I can discover and see what I like. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm like finding a whole bunch of things or, or I'm like, oh, I have to remember this for, you know, another week or another time or, you know, I have to, you know, come back to this in like around Christmas. Like this seems more like a Christmas type song. Um, I do theme things very like thematically. Um, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so then this just keeps on going. So, I mean, I just kind of look at things, you know, week to week and see what um, I want to do. And um, so this week I kind of was like having such a hard time. I wasn't finding one that I really connected with. And like, let me know if you guys want me to do ones um, that maybe like I'm I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of, but I think that there is like a, you know, something good to be taking out of it. But then I feel like there's always something good to be taking out of anything you know any song that you throw out at like at me you know and like you know to suggest me like crazy songs to break down um i'm sure i could find something positive in it <laughs> i try to usually um so yeah and so that's what i do and um so yeah this is how i came across um the one i'm doing this week which is exhibit c by j electronica um, which apparently, um, when I, you know, was talking about doing this one, um, uh, Holden mentioned that, um, it was suggested, um, a few times, I guess, by different people. So that's kind of great. I'm glad to, I'm able to accommodate un, uh, unbeknownst to me. Um, uh, you know, I was already kind of like, this is the song that I'm going to do. Like I heard it, I, it made sense to me what was going on. And I was like, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. And, um, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> it came out um, as, I think, a, a digital single um, on December 22nd, 2009. Again, like, right before Christmas, like, <coughs> all right, that's ideal time to get, like, music in. People have extra spending money post-Christmas, you know, because it's the 22nd, so it's right, right before Christmas. Um, so they've got, you know, extra minutes, you know, money for, for you know, Christmas uh, that they get for Christmas, sorry. Um, and then, you know, so they'll go out and buy that, you know, Boxing, boxing Day sales or whatever. Um, plus, you know, people are going to be buying like last minute gifts and this seems like a great idea, you know, go for a little bit of music. Um, so yeah, so let's just get into the lyrical breakdown and let enough of me uh, just babbling on about not really much. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Let's give it a listen. And that you rhyme, how you do, and that you shine like you grew up in the shrine in Peru. Oh. All right, so for the intro, we have um, Just Blaze, who is also like the producer of this. Um, I'm not really sure. I've never heard of him. I don't really know too much about him um, at all. Um, so let's just, you know, hear what he has to say. It's a very like interesting song. It sounds kind of cool. It's very like old school sounding a bit. I don't know. It's It was really like, like something about it like appealed to me a lot. I think that it might appeal to you. So let's see what happens. So he says, Hey, it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. 
This time around, the revolution will not be tele televised. Woo! As we proceed to give you what you need. Oh, night, mother. Let, get live, mother. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, in the hearing against the state of hip hop versus J Electronic, I present Exhibit C. So he's basically just introducing kind of what's going on, what's about to happen. Um, we've kind of got like the, the master of ceremonies, like the MC, like that's kind of how I feel about him at this like time, um, Just Blaze. And he's kind of saying like this is like the, the hip hop, uh, the state of hip hop versus like you know, the artist Jay Electronic. Um, I'm not sure if it's Jay, if it's Electric or Electrica because I've seen like two different, two, 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 different, two different things. I don't know. Um, I believe on, um, yeah, Electronica on Spotify. So I want to go with that. Um, Jay Electronica, we're going, yeah, I'm sticking with it. Um, so yeah, so that's what it is. He's giving like the evidence. This is evidence of something like, you know, what he's making, the creation. Um, and he's also talking about a revolution not being televised. Um, and like maybe in the fact that it's kind of happening like underground or like, you know, like it's not meant to be seen and it's like small moves or like maybe they're happening like within like, you know, all the people. So it's you know, not something that can be like shown is something that you feel. Um, and like, you know, how that feeling and how that power, um, you know, changes and how it will change you. And like, that's how like the revolution will grow, you know, like everyone will just gain knowledge, right? Um, so let's get into verse one. Um, when I was sleeping on a train, sleeping on the Meserol Ave, uh, out in the rain without even a single slice of pizza to my name, too proud to beg for change, mastering the pain when New York blanks was often was call, was calling Southern rappers lames, but then slacking our slang. Oh, I used to get dizzy, dizzy spells, hear a little ring, the voice of an angel telling me my name. So this is basically where like Jay comes in. This is where he starts like performing and it's great. Um, and he starts right off like going right into it and by explaining that he was asleep on the train. Um, and then uh, what someone had written on Genius um, was said that he was asleep, like he's sleeping, um, but also like asleep to the world and asleep to the knowledge and the power and stuff like that, you know, kind of like being woke nowadays, like he was not yet woke, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but maybe it's also like he was just sleeping because, you know, he's on a train and I'm guessing it's a subway train. Um, that he's taking public transport. So he obviously doesn't have a car. He's not, you know, he's saying that he doesn't even have a slice of pizza to his name, um, either. Um, and that he's sleeping on like the sleeps, uh, the streets of Brooklyn. That's where, um, Mesrol Avenue is when I looked that up. Um, it's on the, you know, a street in Brooklyn. And so he's sleeping there, um, and it's raining. And so that doesn't sound very like nice unless it's a very hot night and you want to feel the rain, I guess, but still you're sleeping in wet clothes and that's never good. Um, and there were, um, I think he also talks about like that he's too proud to beg on the streets and like maybe he kind of like feels like, like he doesn't deserve anything. Like, I don't know, like, you know, he's too proud in that sense. Um, and there were people from New York who were, who were judging like the Southern rappers um, when they were using like, you know, but then they steal like some of their word choices or like their slang and their lingo. Um, and they, you know, they, as much as they like talk trash about it, they kind of, start using some of their stuff as well. Um, and uh, and he's also from, I believe, New, New Orleans, I think. Yeah, I think that's where he's from. So he's just kind of like a nomad who just kind of wanders around and does whatever. He just kind of goes wherever. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, and this is, I think, the first, you know, homeless person that we've looked at. Um, and I guess he's probably dizzy. He talks about having dizzy spells and I'm sure he's probably hungry um, and probably sick, you know, could be sleeping in the rain, like that makes you, you know, sick as well. Um, so I'm sure it's just a lack of all these things um, and it can't feel good. Um, and let's see, um, yeah. And then, so we have an angel is talking to him and saying his name, maybe he's like religious and, you know, he's praying and, you know, it definitely sounds like that's what's kind of going on. Like, you know, he's hearing angels are speaking to him. Like he's kind of, um, in any sort of religious way, you know, he's kind of like transcended a little bit or he's like hearing like the voice of like, you know, the angels, I guess. Right. Or, or maybe he has a guardian angel that follows him around or, you know, I don't know what was going on in his head. 
Uh, <laughs> so let's keep going. Uh, telling me that one day I'm going to be a great man. Transforming with the Megatron Dawn, spitting out flames. Um, oh, eating whack, rappers alive, shitting out chains. I ain't believe it then. Blank, I was homeless. Uh-huh. Fighting, shooting dice, smoking weed on the corners, trying to find the meaning of life in a, in a corona till the five percenters rolled up on a blank and informed him. We're going to find out. Um, so let's, let's go back a little bit. Um, so the angel is telling him that he's kind of saying that he's going to be a great, um, main. Um, and so now when I think of like main, I feel like what, you know, everybody thinks of like, you know, when you say someone has a great main, I think you think of like the hair or like the first thing I think of is a lion, right? A lion's mane. I feel like that's what most people think of. And maybe he's like the king of the jungle and like, you know, maybe he's like the ultimate and most, you know, regal animal in like the kingdom, you know? king um i think it can also mean like man like maybe like they were just trying to say man instead of main i don't know um like you know he's gonna be a great man one day um uh, i think that's you know maybe they're giving him hope that things are gonna get better and he's going to be someone great like he shouldn't doubt himself um or <laughs> i have lots of interpretations of this um it could be main like m a i n like the main character like he's going to be the main um person in his life and i guess he is right like everyone's their own favorite person um yeah so then uh, he kind of transforms and he says sort of like you know, like a transformer um, words and he spits them out and he makes them like strong and he makes them fierce um, and he's beating rappers in all battles and like outperforming them um, and then um, where he said um, he was like shitting out chains uh, I'm I'm going to interpret it that that it means like um, like I don't I don't know if this is I have no idea if this is true or not. I'm making this up 100%. Um, so um, where like maybe like in like a rap battle or something, maybe like the winners, like the, like the loser has to give the winner their chain. I don't know. Is that a thing? You tell me. I don't know how, why that came into my head. <laughs> um, yeah, sort of like a trophy, I guess, you know, maybe that's why. Um, so he, you know, he also talks about like, you know, he didn't believe it until he was homeless that this was, you know, kind of, again, like the first like homeless person that, you know, we've listened to that I've listened to. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting. It's a whole like other side of like life that I'm not, you know, that I'm not too, too aware of. Um, and you know, he's kind of talking about like how he was, you know, he was fighting and, and he was playing dice and, you know, life just happens on like these street corners. Like it's just, it's very interesting that all this stuff happens there. And he smokes weed there and he does whatever. Um, and he drinks beers and then like these five percenters, like this whole thing was just kind of weird to me. Um, so this is like some sort of like weird, like, like religious organization, I guess, um, that started in like uh, New York City and um they're like the five percent of people on earth that are like enlightened and like know the truth i don't know what truth um and have like this deep urge to like spread the word um to like the rest of the people i guess um so they kind of showed up i think they're just sort of like you know another trendy i don't know if they're trendy or not um another religion you know like side religion expansion i don't know i think religion's interesting but i think these guys are like a bit much <laughs> no offense to anybody if you guys follow them i think that's cool you do you uh maybe you can preach at me and we can have a conversation um yeah so they showed up to preach at him and this is what they said um you either build or destroy where you come from the magnolia projects and the third and slum the third ward slum hmm that's quite amazing that you rhyme how you do and that you shine like you grew up in a shrine in peru oh question 14 muslim lesson two dip diver civilize an 85er i make the devil hit his knees and say and say that oh father abracadabra you rocking with the true and living so they kind of like they're kind of like having a you know a couple of questions you know with him he kind of talks about where he's from they give him some of their truths 
Um, he says, you know, he kind of basically grew up in the Magnolia Projects, which are apparently like some really bad slums in um, New Orleans. Um, and they've since, you know, they've been, just, like, I guess, knocked down, destroyed, taken, whatever, taken away. Um, so they no longer exist. Um, I don't know if that's just because of hurricanes or because somebody actually took them down. But either way, they're not there anymore, um, which I guess is good. Um, so they're, you know, like these people are like very impressed with his rap skills and like, you know, with everything, um, you know, obviously like, duh. <laughs> and he, um, you know, I think, you know, they kind of say that they, he glows like something valuable, like something that's, you know, maybe that they treat, um, high, like in their religion, like maybe something that they, you know, worship. Um, and there's more of like, you know, again, more of this, like, I want to say mumbo jumbo, but I don't want to offend anybody, <laughs> but you heard it. <laughs> um, so they say it was some more of their stuff. And then he, uh, kind of proclaims to be in the know. Like, I wasn't really sure, like maybe he's already like in the know, like, I'm not really sure what was going on there. Um, so shout out to lights out, Joseph. I, Chewy Bivens, shout out to Baltimore, Baton Rouge, my crew in Richmond, while y'all debated who the truth was, the, the, like Jews and Christians, I was on Cecil B. Broad Road, Master, North Philly, South Philly, 23rd, Tasker, 6 Mile, 7 Mile, Hartwell, Gradient. Oh, so he basically just, you know, shouts out a bunch of people, places, um, and friends. Um, and he doubts that, you know, people doubted that maybe that he was that great, but he's here and he is, he is that great. So you better believe it. He's the king. He's gonna, you know, kick some butt. Um, so where blank really would pack a U-Haul truck up, put the high beams on, drive up the curb, add a barbecue and hop up out that black, <laughs> out that back, like what's up, bruh? Kill a blank, rob a blank, take a blank, bust up. That's why you feel the tough play. I never feel ya. You sound really good. You sound real good, and you play the part well. But the energy you're giving off is so unfamiliar. I don't feel ya. We need something realer. Ew, or oh. Um. So he kind of just talks about some gangster shenanigans. You know that you know people got up to like I guess in the hood where he lived and things that he's witnessed and maybe been involved in. Um, people are popping out of like the back of trucks and U-Hauls, you know, whatever they're, you know, and they're fending for themselves, every man for himself. Um, he doesn't feel, you know, like what he's, I guess he's talking to someone or whatever. Um, and he doesn't feel like, you know, like he doesn't believe how hype you're saying you are. He's kind of just like, he's, he's like, he, he kind of thinks that you don't even believe it. I think he's just kind of like, mm, your energy is not really there. It doesn't really sound right. I don't really believe it. You're not really giving it to me. Like, like I'm not really falling for it. Um, it's almost like he kind of pities like these other rappers and he's kind of like, hmm, yeah, that's okay. You think you're great, but you're not really, <laughs> you don't really think you're great. Um, you know, I think that you know whether or not you're great or not. Um, or maybe you don't. I guess that's why. Um, and they just want something realer and like they want him and that's what he can provide for you. So then we have verse two. There's not really a chorus or anything um, on this either. Um, so we've got um, G Electronica again and like Just Blaze does like the um, kind of like the little side voices. Um, so Nas hit me up on the phone and said, what are you waiting on? Uh, tip me, tip hit, tip hit me up with a tweet said, "What you waiting on?" Diddy sent a text every hour on the dot saying, "When you gonna drop that first blank? You taking long?" So now I'm back spitting that heat. Could pass a polygraph that Reverend Run rocking Adidas out on the Hollis Ave. The F O I Marcus Gravy Tiki Nesla. I shock you like an eel. Electric feel J Electra. Oh my God! Keep going. So he's kind of like, he's kind of bragging a little bit. He's got Nas calling him up. He's got Q-Tip waiting, being like, come on, girl. like put out your song. Like, you know, you, you were great. Like, you know, we want to hear it, you know, put your record out. Um, you know, Puff Daddy is like texting him all the time. Like I'm, that would be cool, I guess, you know, <laughs> if all these people were like, you know, Nas and Q-Tip and all these people are getting involved. Um, and they're asking, you know, when he's going to put out his music. So now he's doing it. And, you know, the next line, I guess, is in reference to Run DMC, or like the, the Reverend Run Rocking Adidas. 
I think that was um, what that was. And he kind of like names uh, other kind of like pioneers um, and that he's kind of electric and his rhymes are shocking and that people can't get enough. And like what he's ma ma making is like so unique and people want to copy it and, you know, it's going to be like revolutionary, right? Like he does talk about that at the very beginning, the intro. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool that, that he thinks he's, that he's really that great. I think that's awesome. Um, all right. So let's get into the rest of that. Um, then we have verse three. So it's sort of like weird the way it's laid out. Um, they call me J Electronica. Fuck that. Call me J Elect Hanukkah, J Elect Yormuka. I'm a, I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, J Elect Ramadan uh, Muhammad Asalam Alakiam. Sorry. <laughs> um, J Elect. Uh, so Rasul Allah Subhanahu uh, Wa Ta'ala. Uh, through your monitor. Ooh. If you guys know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the, like, the way I've like said it. <laughs> I'm sure it's wrong. Um, if you can let me know what that means, let me know down in the, the comments down below. I'd love to know. Um, my Uzi still weigh a ton. Check the barometer. I'm hotter than the motherfucking sun. Check the thermometer. Sizzles. So people call him J Electronica, but he wants a greater name. Like he feels like it's not enough. Like he needs like a title. Like he needs to be called something stronger and fiercer. And like, you know, he wants like a name of like, you know, and he, and he kind of, you know, wants to be named himself like some of these like religious um, holidays. And like, you know, he wants something that's going to, you know, that he can be named after, I guess. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, and like I said, I'm not really sure what that, the, I think the Islamic stuff says. I'm not really sure what that was saying. Um, and his gun still weighs a lot. Um, which, you know, the, my Uzi still weigh a ton. That's a classic line in, like, hip-hop. It's kind of been said over and over again. Um, and also, like, a like a reference to, like, I think a previous song of his. Um, so, and, you know, checking the barometer, you're checking the air pressure, you're checking the, the heat, the, the, you know, the thermometer, like, you know, when it's hot and it's sizzling, like, you know, like, like what his rhymes are, I guess, right? Like, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about himself. Um, and bringing ancient mathematics back to modern man... My mama told me, never throw a stone and hide your hand. I got a lot of family. You got a lot of hands. A lot of fans. Sorry. Uh, that's why the people got my back like the Verizon man and then laughs. Um, so he's kind of got like these ancient, like, you know, like solutions to, to like these mysteries, I guess. Um, you know, that has more to do with, I think, being like a five percenter. Um, again, so his mother taught him some, like, idiom, like, the never throw a stone and hide your hand, which I had never heard before, which apparently means um, don't start something that you can't finish, that you can't take responsibility for. Um, like, you know, I guess I kind of, like, don't open up and then, like, hide away. Like, I think it's that kind of thing. Um, so he always has people uh, around him calling him, wanting him for something. Like, he's... So, like, that's kind of why he doesn't want to get involved in a lot of things. And that's maybe that's why he was, you know, chose to be. Oh, my cat got in. <laughs> uh, so that's maybe why he chose to be. Um, yeah, I guess homeless, I'm guessing. Um, so, yeah, that's it. And then he makes like a, you know, like the Verizon man. I feel like I don't know if people who still know who or what that, you know, is referenced to, but. You know, I feel like it's kind of like a dated thing, but it's still, it's, you know, it's funny. There's a lot of people behind him. Um, I play the, I play the back and fade to black. And then I devise a plan out in London, smoking, vibing while I ride the tram, giving out the raw food to lions disguised as lambs. And by the time they get the seats hot and deploy all the henchmen to come after me from the treetops, I'm chilling out at Tweetstock, building by the millions my light is brilliant. Woo! So he's behind the scenes in the background planning his next move, chilling in London. He's kind of just living it up. Um, and it's, you know, he's trying to entice, I think, like the lions, so like the people who are like faking it and whatever. Um, but really they're just kind of like, they're really weak, and it turns out. So for me, like he uses like a lion in kind of like lamb's clothes, but like I know the expression a, lion, a lamb in 
in wol- wolf's clothes. So I don't know if that's the same thing or maybe that's like a religious, like, you know, that sounds like it's from the Bible. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so like by the time uh, they've had enough, um, you know, by the time people like have enough, you know, jealousy and anger and like, you know, enough of a problem with him, like he's already gone. Like he's out, he's, you know, he's far away. He's on the grind. He's looking for money. He's not worried about you. He's just, you know, he's doing what he needs to do and his light is bright. And I think that that's kind of, you know, his light is shining, you know, like, like that kind of, uh, that song, you know, my, this little light of mine. So I think that that's, that's great. That his light is a shining. And then we have the outro. Uh, so I rest my case. 09 Act 3, first chapter of the end, the last chapter of a new beginning. If it's so, the things we do without even trying be better than a lot of y'all records. Don't get mad. Morning after world premiere. Me, for real though, I ain't even, I ain't even gonna say nothing. Matter of fact, I ain't saying, I don't even know what I'm, what, why I'm saying this. Jay, you should get Puff to do this over. We moving out. And on to the next record, and um, I'm going to let this ride, 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 ride. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and that's it. That's the outro. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like, goes back to like what the intro was. Um, he's just kind of closing up the scene. Um, so it's sort of like the end uh, of the beginning of like his adventure. Like it's it's the start of something new, but it's the end of something else. Um, and then he's kind of talking about the trial, and he's saying how great, you know, Jay is, and how uh, he makes it look so easy. Um, so don't be jealous or upset that you can't do it like he does. Um, and he's kind of astounded with life. Um, he's been, you know, that he's been allowed to partake in, you know, and he kind of regrets even never saying anything and, you know, points out like a flaw in like Puff Daddy's, you know, line or his verse or whatever and wants him to do it again because he does he's like judging like them now and like they're taking his word seriously, like, which is pretty crazy. Like, it's pretty cool. Like a homeless person to being like a rap advisor for like, some great rapper, right? <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, people take his serious his his opinion seriously. Like he's a pretty important guy. And I guess he he gives them out willingly as well. Um, so yeah. That's it. That was the song. Um, it was very interesting. It's it's a lot more like there is a lot going on and there's you know, he's telling us, you know, his own story, he's telling his truths and like, you know, what he saw and you know what he knows and whatever. And it's a little bit different from like I think a lot of the other rappers that we've looked at or that I've looked at, um, I guess as well. Um, and yeah, it, it just seemed very different, but like kind of, you know, started from the bottom. Now he's here. Right. <laughs> I guess, you know, like that's kind of how I looked at it. You know, he, he made some big moves and you know, he, he made it. And I think that's pretty cool. And I think that that's great. I feel like, I mean, people should know who this guy is because his music was pretty good. It, it made me want to do it. So, um, that's it for me. <laughs> that is my lyrical breakdown for you guys this week. Um, I'll probably pick another one of your requests uh, for to do next week. So if you, uh, want to get on that list, uh, to have me like check out, you can leave those down below. Um, don't forget to, you know, follow me on Twitter, like this video, um, and subscribe if you're not already. Um, yeah, we'd love to see you and stick around. Um, you know, like I said, we put out new stuff all the time, um, weekly at the very least, uh, something's going out and, um, yeah, we'd love for you to guys, uh, to watch and share and learn and grow with us. So, um, that's it for me. Bye guys. Take care. <laughs>